G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro and welcome to another processing video. Hey guys, Queef the Lazy Geek here. Hey Queef. How you going mate? What can I do for you? I need your help. Sure, I'm not doing anything at the moment. What do you need? Processing the Rosette Nebula. It is my most hated target ever. I don't know why I am never happy with the results that I am getting. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen Queeve's latest video. I'll put a link in the description below if you haven't. It is an interesting video. He's gathered 30 hours of data on the Rosette Nebula, and that's 30 hours at F2. He's got a C6 hyperstar system, but he does image in Tokyo under extreme light pollution. So it's gonna be really interesting to have a look at the data and see what we can do. So here is Queeve's data, and you can see it is, uh, quite green at the moment, um, which is fairly typical of a one-shot color camera. I mean, sometimes maybe that it comes out blue uh, here instead of green. Uh, they're easily fixed on the screen transfer function here. I'm gonna unlink the, the channels and that way it stretches them all to kind of match rather than just stretch them all the same amount. So this gives us a better idea of what the image looks like. And as I said, we've got some vignetting, especially down the bottom here, and there is kind of a red color cast and a weird kind of region in here. Um, so I spent most of my time processing actually just on trying to get rid of these gradients. The rest of the processing uh, in terms of what I was doing was quite quick. I mean, some of the computations take a long time, but you can walk away and do whatever you want while that's happening. Uh, in terms of me sitting at the computer, most of the time was working on the backgrounds. Um, so let's have a look at them. The first thing I did was try ABE and it just, I could, you know, this is too complicated for ABE, at least the way I've ever used it. Um, I find there's much more control over DBE here uh, to get rid of things. So the first thing I did was just work on these corners because that's where this kind of vignetting seems to be, especially in this bottom corner. So I've put some points around here where I think it's true sky background uh, and a bit up here because there is some legitimate nebulosity here. And, and it's, it's hard up here. It's hard in this region because you can see there is this faint kind of ring structure that kind of shoots off this way. And in fact, this whole area here is filled with nebulosity. So getting the points right here is actually quite challenging. Uh, and I probably should have spent double or triple the time that I did. And I, I probably spent an hour just on this section. So I probably should have spent maybe two hours and just really getting this right. Um, but you'll see the difference that getting this in the ballpark kind of works, especially in this bottom corner. Um, so I've, I've changed the tolerance here um, and I've changed this to division. I set it to replace the target so it doesn't keep making multiple copies, but I didn't discard the background because I, I wanted to see what the background looked like um, when I was playing with things. So if I run this, then here's the background. And I always like to look at it and see, does it make sense to what the image was? And there was this vignetting, especially in the bottom corner here, and this kind of red color cast with the gray middle uh, that I said looked a bit odd. So if I now restretch this image unlinked, then we'll see the effect that that's had. So it's kind of tamed this bottom corner, so it looks more like the other corners now, which is what we want. And you can see there's more of this nebulosity kind of starting to pop out here. This nebula is becoming more apparent, but we do have this weird still red cast and gray cast here that we're going to have to try and deal with. And that's where another application of DBE, but it's subtraction this time, is going to come in. So I've, I've kind of said that this whole bottom region here, uh, avoiding this nebula here as best I can, is all true sky background. So that's what all these control points are. And I tried to find control points in here where I think it's true sky. So I can see this, this kind of dark lane here. Um, maybe these points here weren't the best choice. Like I said, I need more time um, because maybe this is legitimate signal here. And some of this maybe is legitimate signal down here. It's hard to tell. Um, but I've definitely avoided this ring structure here that we can see. And I've definitely avoided this bit of nebulosity here. So if you run that again, I'm going to get a, a background model to have a look at. And that makes sense to what we saw, that 
we saw red around the outside and a more grey green in the middle. So that was what I was expecting to see. So that should have tamed this. See how the red cast is kind of disappearing down here now and it's giving us more this uniform uh, background. Uh, and then I did that one more time, uh, concentrating very much so on um, thinking that maybe this was legitimate signal here. So I reduced, uh, removed control points from here and I tried to uh, be very careful where I put control points up here. Uh, and I ran that a final time. This this change was subtle, um, but I, I mean, it might not come across on YouTube, but it definitely came across when I was working on it. So like I said, that took at least an hour to get to that point, but I think it's definitely tamed um, that, that gradient. I don't think it's perfect, and I think I could do a lot more um, with more time if, if I was going to do that. But it's much more... Um, uniform and it's a lot better than ABE was able to produce. What I did then in terms of the linear processing was the kind of stock standard thing that everyone's doing at the moment. I used Blur Exterminator, SPCC, and because we've put this through WBPP, it already had an astrometric solution, so it was nice and easy to run. Uh, I did have to make sure I had the most recent version of SPCC because then it has the L Extreme uh, filters set up for you to run here. Um, and I, I, I don't have it on this copy, but I had a, a small um, preview down here for background, and that's where this information is coming from. I just clicked on from preview and chose that preview and ran SPCC. Did some very, night, uh, very light noise X reduction and then removed the stars. And then these last two um, are where I'm getting ready to... Um, split the channels up. So I used RGB working space just to, and applied it just to make sure that when I split the channels here, it's going to split them equally. Uh, whether that's essential or not, I'm not sure, but just in case, just to make sure it, it, it subtracts each channel equally and doesn't have any bias in it. And then I actually extracted the channels and you can see them here. One shot color red, green, and blue. Now the red and the green are stretched and the blue's not, and I'll talk about why um, that is. Uh, when I looked at the green and the blue channels, uh, they were pretty pretty close to each other. They weren't identical, but they were pretty close. But the green was cleaner um, and had a bit uh, more detail to it. So I chose it over the blue. So I didn't use the blue at all. I just used these two channels. Um, and I've, before I stretched them, what I did was this linear alignment here. Because uh, you'll notice if you look at them, the backgrounds are really close. There's a K value there of 0 0.01 and a K value here of uh, 0 0.1 and, and 0 0.1. So they were, they're were they really close in terms of the backgrounds. And the reason that is, is more careful stretching, but also this linear alignment uh, pixel math. It's complicated, or well, it looks complicated, but really what's happening is it's saying, okay, take the take the green information. And this, this happened when it was linear before I stretched, by the way. Um, takes the, the green channel and adds on the average sky background of the red channel here and subtracts off the average sky background of the green channel. Uh, and that way the backgrounds match uh, without affecting the, the nebulosity and the, the overall brightness of the image um, in the lighter stuff. Just, just works on the sky background. So it levels the playing field before we even stretch. Uh, and then I went through and stretched them, um, and I, I used uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch to do that, and I've got videos on that if you'd like to see them. Uh, but you could have used histogram transformation if you'd like. Uh, and this is where they got to once they were stretched, and you can see the backgrounds are pretty close, and the overall brightness of the nebulosity looks pretty close as well, which is what I want. I want them to be matching reasonably well before I combine them for the best result. I then created a synthetic green channel. I know that sounds odd because we've got a green, but I'm going to use the green as, as the blue channel, basically, um, and I'm going to create a synthetic green. I, get, I mean, I guess I could have switched them around and you'd get a slightly different final colour, um, 
And again, this just comes from um, dynamic pixel math, and I've done a video on 4x, and that's what I'm using here. Uh, but basically it's saying, look at the red and the green channels, and where they're both strong, um, give me this synthet synthetic green channel, which is what I get here. It kind of takes the, where both, both channels are strong. And then I've stretched that a little bit more to make it a bit brighter, because it tends to come out quite dark. Um, and the brighter uh, and, and overall kind of um, luminosity that this thing has, as stretched out as the histogram is, the, the better your final um, 4x image is going to be. And then I combined the images together to produce uh, the 4x image. And again, if you've seen my video on 4x, you know how this works. The red channel is just the red image. The blue channel, like I said, I'm actually using the green image that we, we got because that was the better data. Uh, but this is a duo band filter, basically. It's, it's really just got two notches in it. So I've put one in the red, which is the, the HA, and the, the green slash blue notch is really just oxygen, mostly. So I've put it in the blue end, and then I've kind of put a blend of them in the green channel, this synthetic green. Uh, so I've taken the red channel where this synthetic green is really bright. So kind of in the middle is where it's mostly going to be uh, with some of it in this outer bands here. And then I'm taking the green channel where uh, that synthetic green's not so bright and then a mixture of the two between. And what happens when you do that is you get an image that looks like, where is it? This. This is what it looks like initially. Um, so it comes out looking really quite nice already. But what I've done is I've boosted the saturation just a touch, and then I've adjusted the hues. I can show you exactly what I've done, actually. If I go to the History Explorer here for 4X and choose Curves Transformation, I've pulled the reds down to, to make the what was more an orangey red a deeper red. I've pulled the oranges down slightly as well to make them a deeper orange. And then I've pulled the yellows up to make them a bit more a bit deeper yellow, um, verging towards the green end of the spectrum. So it really kind of separates out the reds, the oranges, and the greens. And that's about all I did there, as, as well as the, the saturation boost uh, to get to this point here. Then you can see I've done some color saturation boosting. Well, basically, that's on the blues uh, to make them just a little bit bluer. And then I put the stars back. Um, and, and the stars I removed, remember, way back at the beginning when it was linear. So I just did a, a rough histogram stretch on those stars. And they should be fairly color accurate because we used SPCC on them. Um, so I didn't stretch them super. That's why they're, they're not completely overrunning the frame here. If I zoom in towards the, the middle of the, the uh, rosette, you can see there's some quite nice star color there in terms of oranges and um, some white blues. I could have boosted the saturation on them, I guess, if, if we'd wanted to. And then the final step, I just um, pulled the histogram in slightly. Because what, what tends to happen with uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch is it has a lot of tail at either end, and that's the whole point. It doesn't, it doesn't clip um, your data, which is nice. So you've got room at the end to pull that histogram, um, the, the black point towards the tail of your histogram, um, without clipping. Um, and, and it just uh, gives it a bit more of a boost. Now, if I was doing this, again, with a bit more time, I'd probably have spent a bit more time boosting the contrast in the this kind of dust here because it's a bit bright for my liking in here. But overall, I think the image has come out quite nice. This I really like this bit of nebulosity here that we managed to pull out, and you can nicely see uh, this band of gas that's shooting off from the rosette because it's quite a deep image and there's a really dark dust lane here too which is quite interesting. Um, so overall I think uh, Queeve's data was really nice. It was nice to work with. Uh, it was challenging because of that that initial light pollution so it's a really good practice uh, for working with dynamic background extraction. And you can see I haven't been perfect with it. I've still got some banding here but and it's hard to know whether it's real or whether uh, it's it's light pollution i think i've done a pretty good job of getting the background fairly uh, nice and uniform and not losing 
all of that nebulosity, but I think I could have probably boosted the contrast in the actual uh, rosette itself here a little bit more just to make it pop a little bit, but that, that would be for a future. I'm basically doing this for the controlling the, the background, showing you how powerful DBE can be when used uh, well, and also showing you the beautiful color that you can get from the L Extreme when you separate out those filters uh, and, and work on the channels individually. All right, that's it from me today. Hopefully you've learned something, especially about DBE uh, over ABE. Um, it's always nice to use someone else's data. So grab Queeve's data and have a play with it yourself and see what you can come up with. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>